go to the last week of science. Question, do fruit flavored lifesavers count as, you know, like fruits? Because I mean, pizza is basically a vegetable. So like gummy flavored fruit things should be considered, you know, fruits. That makes sense. That That's, I'm, I have that. Synthesia is when a certain sound turns into a color for a person. So an A sharp might be a rose pink, or a B sharp might be a muddy gray. It's a pretty rare condition. But at the California Institute of Technology, researchers are trying to give blind people the ability to see in that way. The voice device is a computer attached to a camera and darkened glasses that allows it to see the way the human eye does. The computer then scans each camera image, creating a sound with a certain frequency and volume, depending on the vertical location and brightness of the pixels. Bright pixels at the top of a column give off a high loud frequency, while a low frequency would come from pixels lower and darker at the bottom of the column. The voice was tested with both blind and sighted subjects. While the untrained sighted subjects were only able to listen to the sound and match the image, the blind subjects were able to actually touch them and then match the image to the sound. Researchers found that both pairs of subjects actually perform quite similarly, which is due to the cross-modal connections that we have in our brains. Although we don't know where these connections are at the moment, they have some ideas of where they might be located in the brain. Reading this reminded me of a TED talk that I heard about Neil Harbison a few years ago. Neil Harbison was born colorblind, like completely colorblind. He created a device that attached to his brain, which allows him to hear colors quite like the voice does. I mean, it's one of the most fascinating TED Talks that I think I've ever seen. So I will link it over here so that you can be just as fascinated with me. <laughs> Many people might not know that mushrooms are an extremely important part of the environment. They are healthy for you, they're decomposers, and if you ever need to grow or shrink in like no time flat, they also help with that too. It also seems that mushroom spores play a part when it comes to us gaining rain as well. Ecologists Nick Money and Mary Beth Hassett from Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and Mark Fisher from Mount St. Joseph University discovered that mushroom spores contribute to local weather when looking into how spores hold water droplets. On each gill on the underside of the mushroom are billions of tiny little spores waiting to be released. Water vapor condenses on the surface of the spore and forms a ball on the base of the spore. After the droplet collects enough water, it drops from the spore, shooting the spore into the air at three feet per second. Now, I hear you, you're asking, how does this make mushrooms the tiny little rainmakers? Well, you know, rain forms when one giant cloud full of water droplets hits another giant cloud full of water droplets and the water droplets are heavy enough to fall to the ground due to gravity. In a tropical rainforest where there are low lying clouds and warm air, the spores are helping to make the air more humid, thus helping to create bigger clouds and more rainfall. And although we here in the United States are in a tropical region, it seems that areas with large populations of mushrooms are also working in that same way. If less rain falls, then less spores will be dispersed and less mushrooms will grow, thus creating less spores to have the air condense and make the air more humid, so less rain will definitely Fall. It's just one giant circle of, oh my God, we need rain. So shout out to the real MVP of the week, mushrooms. You're delicious, nutritious, and helpful. One of my friends has stopped being a pescatarian and has become a strict vegetarian over the last few years. Her reasoning is that fish have very cute faces. Uh, yeah. Now, it might have been part of my fish prejudice, but I assume that all of them were basically as smart as a goldfish, which means not smart at all. However, it seems that they are more intelligent than I give them credit for. Australian scientists have found that distressed fish emit a cry for help, which attracts other carnivores to them in order to escape. It was found that the chemical substance 
that the injured fish emits not only warns other fish of the danger, but also attracts other predators to its rescue. Mark McCormick of James Cook University says that 40% of the time the prey fish gets away due to the fact that the predator fish drops it and runs for its own life. The next step for the scientists is to expand the research and see how the distress caused were affected by damaged reefs. Due to the fact that reefs degrade the chemical cues that allow for this cry for help in some species. This has to be one of the most interesting things that I think that I've researched in these last five videos. Now if only humans could figure out how to do this. So what we learned today was that the voice device is going to allow blind people to hear colors, that mushrooms are the real MVP, <laughs> and that fish emit a chemical cue that tells other fish to stay away and for bigger fish to basically, you know, come and get them. <laughs> As always, everything that I talked about will be linked in the bottom box or on my blog at yosciencesawesome.com. Also, tweet me at YoScienceIs on Twitter. Don't forget to LSS, like, share, subscribe. Like so that I know that I'm doing a good job. Share so that other people can be just as smart as you. And subscribe so that you can always be the first to know when I put up a new video. <laughs> so with that, have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye!